And this horrible music moment is brought to you by the 1990s. Today we're looking at objective and subjective tone. But to do that, we need to understand what types of writing there are. So there are, well, that was lovely, three purposes to writing. To inform, to entertain, and to persuade. So examples of each of those are informational text are sharing knowledge or instructions. They're described as objective, matter of fact, straightforward. You could open a manual on how to work on your car. You could look at a cookbook. You could get an assignment, assignment instructions from your teacher. Those are informative texts. Persuasive texts are trying to provide a reader with an opportunity to come over to the point of view of the writer. Um, so these are described as argumentative, persuasive, forceful, controversial, positive, supportive, negative, or critical. Anytime you get one, those are all persuasive texts. Also, there's entertainment text, the goal to captivate or interest an audience. They're described as amusing, entertaining, lively, humorous, suspenseful. Whew. Um, you could also, any kind of movie would be an entertainment, a television show, that sort of thing. So here we have our first example. Out of the three purposes, what is it? So first, to make a decision, we have to look at what we're seeing. So we have a 1990s uh, take a bite out of crime. We have a crime dog, and he says, say no to drugs. Winners don't use drugs. So let's start. Is it informational? No, it's not giving us an inf information. There's no statistics or information there, so it's not that. Persuasive? Well, it certainly looks that way because it isn't entertaining. It's saying that winners, so it's using that kind of language that makes us want to see their bias, and it's telling us, say no to drugs. So it is trying to persuade us one opinion. Option two, again, same options. This is a photograph from the Olympics from a few years ago when the women's soccer team won gold. Um, and she literally was so pleased, she just pulled her blazer off, was like, yeah! So, is it informative? No, because I had to tell you all of that. Was it persuasive? Because no. But it sure is entertaining. It reminds us of watching the Olympics this year, of watching sports in the past. So yes, it's an entertaining image. Here we have um, the future prescribed map of what will be the light rail throughout Colorado. Um, it's not persuasive because it's not asking us to take the light rail or to provide money. And it's not really entertaining, although it does kind of look like an octopus. But it is informational in its text. We can have lots of information from it. Most maps are the same way. Next, we have this lovely kitten chewing on a baby pig says, does not dislike chicken. It's not informative, although the cat is telling us that bacon is not the same thing as baby big, and it's not really persuasive, so it must be entertaining. And finally, here we have how to fit your dog for a coat. That's certainly not entertaining. It's got lots of information, but it's not trying to persuade me of anything. Therefore, because it is all informational, it's an informed text. So here we have some written examples. Number one, cloning human beings should be banned. There's no information provided there, and it's not entertaining, so therefore it's a persuasive topic. How do I know? Look at the words used. Should. It's not decisive. It's an opinion. Should tells me of a bias. A bias tells me of a persuasive text. Number two. The National Hurricane Center predicts a record number of hurricanes in the upcoming months. Well, it's an informative text. How do I know? Look at the verb, predicts. There's no way I can argue with that. Now, you could argue with me and say that they're trying to persuade us this is going to happen. Mm, you might be able to win an argument there, but that's not the intention behind the statement. If it were, it would say something like, it would end the statement with, you should move from Florida before you drown. Number three, friends don't let friends drive drunk. It's not entertaining and it's not informative. It's persuasive because it's stating an opinion. Now, I would hope that all of your friends encourage all of their friends not to drive while drinking, but it is an opinion. You could still do it. Please don't. Number four, age is strictly a case of mind over matter. If you don't have a mind, it doesn't matter. Okay, 
not an informative, and it's not persuasive. Why do I know it's entertaining? Because it's a ridiculous statement. No one in that sort of terminology would be able to actually think, right? Okay, so how do we establish tone? It's basically the words that are chosen. The author is going to use the words they are with direct intention. And they are going to apply reason and emotion to ensure that, that tone comes across. Which leads to the two types of tone we can come across in reading. One, objective tone. These are facts and reasonable explanations. It's impartial, unbiased, neutral, and formal. So these are just the facts that set up the tone. As opposed to the subjective tone. It's going to give us a reader or an author's personal beliefs. It's going to talk about feelings and judgments and opinions and experiences. It's going to have a bias. It's going to be emotional, informal. So we're going to see words like I and you. It's going to show favor toward one topic or another. So what's the difference? How can we tell? One, if you care about saving lives, you should vote for gun control. Well, we already established that it has a certain attack, so it must be persuasive. If it's a persuasive text, it must be subjective. It's an opinion. You is also present, so that's my other hint. Number two, you can do anything if you just put your mind to it. Come on, you can do it. All right, again, first thing I see, the word you. Therefore, it's going to lead me originally to think that it must be a subjective tone. Also, it's stating an opinion. If you just put your mind to it, you can do anything. Well, if that's true, I should have millions of dollars. Number two is subjective. Finally, number three, thick, heavy clouds hung low in the sky like a soggy, wet blanket. Okay, this looks like it's out of a book. I can tell that just because of the wording. Soggy and wet kind of bring mind here, but we have no opinions. It is just simply stating about the weather. Therefore, it's objective. So yesterday, or your last blog, excuse me, you looked at type one knowledge level questions. So in case you were wondering, um, I've included a reporter here because type one questions are reporter questions. They're knowledge based. And a knowledge question is an answer that exhibits memory of previously learned materials. You're recalling information or you're answering the five W's, who, what, where, when, and why, and sometimes how, which unfortunately doesn't get to hang out with the other five W's. But we're looking at type two, comprehension questions. And a comprehension question has an answer that demonstrates understanding of facts and ideas by organizing, comparing, translating, interpreting, giving descriptions, or stating main ideas. In other words, you have to read between the lines or make an inference to understand. So what are we made, meant to infer? Let's have a look at this little cartoon here. We've got Uncle Sam watching TV and the television says, Genocide occurring in Darfur. One person can make a difference. And Uncle Sam thinks that person better get started. Okay, to make an inference, we need to really look at what we're seeing. So the TV notes about the genocide. Uncle Sam is watching. He's sitting back in a lounge chair, drinking some pop, eating some popcorn. The TV says literally that, the, that genocide is happening and some one person can do something to change this. And he thinks, huh. Somebody better do that. So I need to read between the lines. Now I know that Uncle Sam is a symbol of America. Therefore, Uncle Sam is sitting back, America is sitting back. And I also think that we're trying to make a point here. One person can make a difference. That person better get started. Oh, that person is America. So America should do something. Now if my assignment <coughs> were to ask one type two questions, I could look at these sort of questions. What ideas show that America should be involved in the genocide? Or how would you state in your own words that America should be involved in the genocide occurring in Darfur? Hmm, these are great level two questions. You can see other question starters at the bottom below this video. So it leads to your assignment you're going to post one level two question and answer one using RAP. Remember, that's restate, answer, and provide proof. An example of a question would be, what do you want to learn to do? The answer would be, I want to learn to kayak. That's my answer and restatement. Because I love water and canoeing is really boring. That's my provided proof. 
If you have questions on wraps or this assignment, type two questions, inferencing, anything else we've covered, let us know. We're here for you and to help. Adios. Bum 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 ba da dum bum bum bum.